Dear Wandering Mind, the train of thought only goes one way, but I think I need a moment to review what just happened. I'm not entirely sure when I got on board. Perhaps when I arrived. I was told the sun would be rising at the other end of the tunnel. I was told that the fish was delicious and nature was breathtaking. I read that it was a land of fantasy where people dressed like in the drawings of their books. And I heard their minds were so powerful they could chop wood with their bare hands. Do you think you're religious? I'm not asking if you are, I just wonder if you think you are. Regardless of your answer, I'd like to understand what you value in your arguments. Do you emphasize what you believe in, or how often you practice? If this train could go back in time, I'd tell you how Confucianism was first introduced here, but I can only show you this place through my eyes and... You can rely on your answer to my first question to guess where I was. If before this journey through thought, you spent some time travelling through books, you might ask me how we ended up talking about Confucianism when we were having a conversation about religion. Also, for those of you who are in utter confusion about what's a Confucian, I'll explain my digression. Confucianism is technically a school of thought, which basically means that it's a set of ideas shared by a group of people. From my time travelling through books, what I understood was that these principles were defined to bring society back to peace. Nowadays, it's become what experts call invisible tradition, it's common practice, which brings us back to religion. notion in Buddhism is that the human mind profoundly misunderstands the nature of reality. This leads people to commit ignorant actions and perpetuate cycles of suffering. To break this cycle, the solution is to reform the mind or take the train. According to Buddhism, the basic misunderstanding of which both you and I are guilty is the belief that this world is made of discrete entities that are independent or self-sufficient. It's the belief that your wandering mind and mine are detached from one another. I was trying to walk forward and not to stare, but I couldn't help being fascinated by her makeup. Each line that she had traced and each colour she had picked in order to put on the perfect face. Almost as if underneath she didn't have any. Do you ever do this as a child? Meticulously pick funny looking elements of the environment and cherish them affectionately? You know, as if they were sacred? The spiritual version of this youthful view of nature is found in Shintoism, which is commonly described as the native tradition of this place. It teaches you respect for nature and the sacred entities that populate it. You devote respect to parts of the landscape that inspire you all, by tying ropes around them for sacralization and making them offerings in hopes of mercy. You can feel a connection towards a rock, a tree, or a mountain, of course.